Hello, welcome to our channel. Let's discuss the reason why cornflakes were actually invented to curb sexual appetites. Enjoy the video and don't forget to subscribe. As you pour milk in your cereal bowl every morning, you might not even be fully awake yet, and you probably haven't thought much about the origins of cornflakes. After all, it's a pretty simple, unassuming cereal, as far as the modern plethora of sugar-coated options go, some might even call them bland. But the question why were cornflakes invented? Actually leads to some shocking and disturbing answers. Cornflakes were developed by John Harvey Kellogg and his brother W. H. Kellogg in 1894, not to satisfy grumbling morning tummies, but to curb your sexual appetite. That's right, Kellogg was extremely anti-sex and allegedly, he never even consummated his own marriage. See, Kellogg took his cues from another snack inventor, Reverend Sylvester Graham, of Graham Cracker fame. Yes, these men created foods, still in wide circulation today, specifically designed to curb people's prurient desires. Kellogg also proposed some pretty violent ways to suppress your sexual appetite. Let's look, then, at a short history of your favorite the puritanical origins of your breakfast foods. Kellogg advocated tying up children's hands to keep them from pleasuring themselves. Kellogg created a variety of strange medical machines at the Battle Creek Sanitarium. He invented everything from slapping machines, which is exactly what it sounds like, to machines that ran electric currents through your urethra. But he suggested some even more disturbing methods to keep children in particular from touching themselves. Kellogg never had intercourse with his wife. Since no in-depth analysis of Kellogg's profile exists, it's difficult to determine if he was a sexual sadist or simply asexual. He thought sex, the very natural and only successful way to procreate, was impure. He and his wife, Ella Eaton, never consummated their marriage, and they slept in separate bedrooms for their relationship's entirety. They raised their eight adopted children at Kellogg's Battle Creek Sanitarium. Kellogg believed that sugar and spice isn't nice, but would lead you on a path to hell. Kellogg steadfastly believed one's diet greatly influenced their sexual appetites. He thought people should sustain themselves on a diet similar to a barn animals, since they definitely never have any sex at all. Essentially, he thought eating meat would lead to beating your meat. Oh, and anything with any sort of spice or flavor would lead to immediate intense horniness. Tea and coffee have led thousands to perdition in this way. Andes, spices, cinnamon, cloves, peppermint, and all strong essences powerfully excite the genital organs and lead to the same result Kellogg said. That's why he decided to invent cornflakes arguably the blandest, most tasteless thing this side of sucking on toilet paper. Kellogg tacitly supported child abuse and mutilation. Kellogg never had any children of his own, but ran a household of more than 40 adopted and foster children. He suggested in his books that to identify a child masturbator, you need to catch them in the act. This means storming into a child's room unannounced and ripping their clothes off them. For a male, you would see an obvious erection. Kellogg believed women touching themselves during pregnancy was bad. One wonders if Kellogg ever read Freud and what he thought about the development of the psychosexual stages. After all, the two figures were alive around the same time. However, they had extremely different views about how and why children would begin to touch their genitals at an early age. Kellogg believed a vile masturbator was formed in utero because the mother touched herself. Kellogg thought dozens of ailments were caused by people touching themselves. Neither plague, nor war, nor smallpox have produced results, so disastrous to humanity as the pernicious habit of onanism. Kellogg thought that speaking out against this and encouraging people to change their diets would help rein in people's predilection for self-lust and contribute to a healthier and more spiritual climate. Cornflakes were unsweetened because sugar rushes led to blood rushes. John Kellogg and his brother, W. H. Kellogg, invented cornflakes while working at Battle Creek Sanitarium in Michigan. But while John was the medicine man, with a heart of puritanical stone, Will had more of the entrepreneurial spirit. The Kellogg brothers spent some time tried using various grains to make thin sheets of cracker-type substances, using basic weed and oat-based ingredients. An accident in the lab one day led to the creation of flakes, and once they figured out corn was a better source material than wheat, corn flakes went to market and were immediately tested out on the Kellogg sanitarium patients in 1894. W.H. thought sales would be better if they added sugar, but his hard-nosed brother refused. So W.H. eventually bought the rights to cornflakes so he could alter the recipe specifically by adding sugar. John, naturally, was fiercely opposed. Apparently, a sugar rush can lead to a rush of blood to other regions, which John was adamantly against. Kellogg got his idea from Graham Crackers. Reverend Sylvester Graham was one of the most outspoken members of the temperance movement in the 1830s. He was among the first to champion the idea that a plain diet of oats and wheat could successfully curb sexual appetite. 
While others in the temperance movement focused the dangers of alcohol, Graham focused most of his sermons on the horrors of masturbation, which he said, inflamed the brain more than natural arousal. To put his money where his mouth was, Graham invented the Graham Cracker in 1829. It was originally made with unbleached wheat flour, bran, and coarsely ground germ. Graham marketed it particularly as a great masturbation deterrent for adolescent boys. Vegetarianism in America definitely didn't use to be woke. In modern times, vegetarians and sex-positive people tend to run in similar circles. These types of people may believe they're more woke than, say, a Big Mac-eating trucker who has never heard of the Kinsey scale. It's weird, then, to realize the history of American vegetarianism has strong ties to two men who absolutely hated sex. The Victorian era was not a friendly time for masturbation, alcohol, or anything fun. The temperance movement took a stance against alcohol, tobacco, sex, and masturbation. Back then, self-pleasure was called onanism. The Victorians were a particularly stuffy bunch, and with religious revivals simultaneously taking place all over the Western world, masturbation and sex in general were shamed like never before. There were several books published at the time that specifically condemned masturbation. Anonia. Or the heinous sin of self-pollution and all its frightful consequences was a fun one, as was Samuel Tissot's treatise on the diseases produced by onanism. So, with books like this being the popular reading of the time, you can understand the mentality in which John Kellogg was born. Kellogg's flakes were actually his tamest idea on how to deter self-pleasure. Kellogg had a bunch of bizarre methods for dealing with the urge to masturbate. Terrifyingly, some of them came down to straight-up genital mutilation. He really was a sick, sadistic man. Thanks for watching. Do like, subscribe and comment.